So here we go, semi-final number one in the Continental Quota Tournament for Recurve Men. Mete Gajos of Turkey leads out his opponent, Thomas Shiro of France. semi-final number one it's bragging rights at stake for sure for these athletes but particular importance to Thomas Chirot on target number two who is through to the semi-finals along with his teammate uh, Jean-Charles Valdon who is in the other semi-final and both of those archers will want to do better than the other but shooting first in this semi-final is Turkey's very own Mete Gazos he's just 21 years old and he is the world number two. Eight. First arrow drifting off. The sighter is an eight. Staying pretty cold there, Gazros. He's already shone out on this field in the quarterfinals. Eight. Also eight, so I wonder if that wind is there playing its part. Both going in the same direction, left and low. It may be that the, the wind is lulled, um, and so that's why it's pushed them that way. Trading equal points again, neither finding the 10. So you think the wind has dropped down? It does look like the flags are not moving quite so much. They've made an adjustment, and now these arrows, nine. the next arrows, will be the best. And uh, another nine from uh, Gazos, a low score compared to his uh, first quarter final, where his lowest point score was a 27 in that quarter final. Opportunity for Shiro straight away, nine. but he's matched him as well. So uh, 26 apiece. Y do you think it is? <laughs> This time, not because it's got windy, but because it's stopped being gusty that uh, it's had the effect. Yes, yeah, so if, you've, if you've changed your sight, you made an adjustment for that wind, and now it's died off, that could then send you the opposite direction. So both archers seem to be a bit affected there. But um, it's just such an interesting dynamic, this match, because for Mete, he stood on his home soil in front of uh, delegates of, of his home country, and he wants to impress. You know, he still wants to win this. He's got his spot, but... I'm sure he wants to go ahead and win the whole tournament, but for Thomas, here he has to go and win. Like, you know, we've got um, Jean-Charles Valdon in the next semi-final, and Thomas needs to go out there and show his federation that he's the best. So, you know, it's a fantastic mix here. Yeah, it certainly is, and especially seeing as we're going to uh, Paris, France, for uh, the next stage of the Hyundai Archery World Cup. In fact, the final stage, only three stages in Olympic year. Um, but it will also combine the final the Olympic qualification second. tournament for teams. And France haven't qualified as a men's team. So uh, not only will uh, Sh Oshiro and uh, Valdor going up against each other here, it's likely that they're going to be teamed together in Paris and having to fight with each other against a common enemy. Gazos uh, in uh, a tournament that hasn't been very favourable to the Turkish archers. We'll shoot first in the second set and uh, back into the nines for him. Yeah, archery is a funny one because it's such an individual sport, but then the team round, you know, you don't actually win so many matches to actually get a medal. So it's hugely important to work together as a team as well. So it's a really interesting dynamic within a country. Nine. 
So, the opportunity for Gazos is there to get 29, but he drops the points. And now it, uh, the opportunity switched over to Shiro, a 10 here, and he goes into the lead. Oh, when the opportunity came, Thomas Shiro, as he's done earlier in this competition, takes it. 29 to 28. Crucially, it's uh, Shiro who takes the points. But actually, overall, when you look at it, the standard has just jumped up in the second set. They took a set to find their way, and now they're right in there, Nikki. Yeah, as I said, both for their own reasons. They both want to come here and win this match. So it's going to be really interesting. There's not much between them. Trade in tens and nines now. Now better. Yeah, it really is. And, and interesting what you're saying about the, the fact that it's a curious sport in that these athletes are having to compete against each other right now. And uh, and they will be uh, p potentially teaming up. I mean, both, both of these athletes will be teaming up with their teammates who they've been against here and working together as a unit. I mean, are there any other Olympic sports that, where that happens? I think, I think maybe, maybe in fencing. Oh, good. Yeah, very good. It is. Yeah, I think they do. They do fight against each other in fencing and then team together. So trailing now, Gazos straight hey. in to the 10. Tens for both of them at the start of this one. Gazos. <gasps> right back in the centre, Nikki. Two X's. Doesn't get any better than that. Can he match it? A bit of shaking there. I think the pressure got to him. Out to the right. Maybe a little soft shot to send it right. So this not only to get right back in the match, but on for a perfect 30. <laughs> easy, easy for him. A perfect score on request to draw a level with Thomas Shiro. Nine, 27. And crucially, again, another turning point in this match. Nikki, you said it, the nerves. Uh, what, what is it that you're seeing? I mean, look, you can, they're all under huge amounts of pressure. But I, I'm going to be honest with you. I was about to say, look how calm Shiro looks. He looked absolutely fine until he started to draw. Yeah, there's just some tension there, obviously. But you know, for him, this is still him fighting for his Olympic spot. He's got to get through and be better than Jean Charles Baladan in the next semi final. So, so much pressure. I can't tell you, you know, the Olympic Games is the pinnacle of this sport. To be there is just the dream of these archers. So it just means so much. And that does bring with it some pressure. And you, you've just got to try and stick to your game plan, keep moving, keep, you know, that bubble around you and make sure people can't tell you're under pressure. But ultimately, this is uh, the biggest prize. Yeah, you got to dig deep. Pull out all the stops. Square now after a perfect 30 from Mete Gajos in the third. We'll shoot first in the fourth. <laughs> and another 10, that is five tens in the last six arrows from Gajos. Not showing any pressure on his face, Thomas Shiro, but certainly feeling it, and the scoreline starting to show it. Hey. Hey. I was just showing, you know, how good he is, world number two. Nine. 
Perhaps an over-adjustment there. Possibly, yeah, there wasn't much wrong with it, was there? Gansas looking so comfortable here. Nine. Just missing out on a consecutive 30. And uh, has put this clearly out of reach and has come from 3-1 behind to lead by 5 set points to 3. Good solid finish from Thomas Shiro to get a 28 and he's moving back up in terms of his own personal score. But this one's really swung around in the last two sets. A 30 and a 29 from Metagazos has put him in a commanding position. Uh, we've got one more set to go, regulation time. Uh, is there another twist in this tower, or has uh, Gazos broken the back of this one? He's just looking so strong, isn't he? 28, 30, 29. So the momentum is with him. Um, there's so much pressure uh, on Shiro, so to see if he can get back into it. You can see a bit of K-tape on the back of his neck there. Um, so he's obviously getting a bit of physio support as well. Something you know a little bit about as a practicing physio. <laughs> Nikki had a little look at my dodgy knee earlier on. You know what she said? You're just getting old, Karen. You're just getting old. But she does know her stuff, clearly, because I don't know. I didn't know it was called K-Tape. But, it, yeah, he's he's actually worn that for the whole of this season. I've seen that when I've seen him shooting. He's been wearing that, that little bit of support. Clearly, he's going to need everything he's got here trailing by five set points to three get to Sunday and that's a beautiful start a 10 here and remember he's going to be looking over his shoulder at the next semi-final because Shiro whilst not out of this if he does go out he's going to be looking with a Valandong and supersede Unru in the second semi-final Gazos matches that 10 with one of his own. Hey. Unbelievable. <laughs> the pressure this guy is under and two X's. Fantastic. Adjustment. I mean, he only, I think he's clipped the 10 there, but do you see that adjustment? He already knew it was going to go left and he did a bit of... Um, Kondo to try and bring it across, which worked. Copyright Mackenzie Brown. <laughs> oh, <laughs> brilliant 30 when he needed it from Thomas Shiro. So he's got himself right back into this. Uh, five set points apiece, potentially, but it could be a perfect from Gazos here. Let's see. Oh, look at this. This measure is so important now. It's either 5-5. Five, five, and we'll go to a shoot-off as the score line is showing. Or Gazos has leveled up on scores and it's 6-4. Now, I think the Turkish coach has looked at this and he said, look, that, first, that second arrow from you, Mete, definitely a 10. You've taken this one and you're through uh, to the final. What do you reckon, Nikki? This is so, so tight and so, so cruel for Thomas. I mean, you know, the difference of this might mean him going to the Olympics or not right now. And... Oh, just absolute nail biter. The, the judge has got to get in there, get their magnifying glass out, decide is it touching the line or not. If it is touching the line, it'll be the highest score. It is. Oh, look at that. It has been marked up to a 10. And that means they both shot 30s in the final set. They share the set points, one each. So rather than it going to 5-5 five, five to Shiro, it's a crushing thing to see the scores switch over from his point of view to 6-4 with Gazos going through but what a, a great win for the home nation athlete in a competition where they've really struggled and to be honest with you it's a surprise that Turkey hadn't already booked their place at the Olympic Games Gazos has done this here can he make it a trilogy or triple here and take the gold medal We've really crammed in a lot of archery into this session. I'm afraid we couldn't crowbar in a shoot-off, uh, but Gazos is through to the final.